Every day I jump out of bed, splash water all over my head, brush them up my teeth, and make sure my ears are clean. These days you gotta be strong, so I do a push up and sing a song, I pick on the guitar Welcome and stamp everybody. on the tambourine. Get comfortable, Always we'll good begin to in change just a minute. my socks, we'll get know the tools a couple minutes in my right. toolbox, learn people good, but learn myself the best. Don't get lonesome, stay glad, take a bath, wear some plaid, work when I can work, but don't forget to rest. Dream good all night long, rise up and sing your song. They say life is hard and they're not wrong, so keep that hope machine running strong. Adiole. See you getting settled in. Adiole. Stations and living rooms. Cars and kitchens. We're everywhere. All right. Thank you so much for coming. Um, we'll just let people in as they arrive, but we want to respect your time. Um, my name is Maddie Brossart, and I'm one of the guides in crowing, um, and I use he, him pronouns. And I'm Brent Cummins. I use he, him pronouns, and I'm the Camp Outdoor Education Director. Um, so it is nice to thank you for joining us. Um, and here's what we're going to do tonight. We're going to just kind of talk through the um, whole trip, give you just a big high-level overview. Now we're going to get into some logistics. Then we're going to uh, talk about COVID mitigation specifically, um, and then we'll take some Q&A. Um, and in this format, um, the Q&A just chats. You should be able to chat to Brent and myself, um, and we'll just collect all those and we'll answer them at the end. And if there's any that we cannot answer, um, we will make sure to include it in our follow-up email. Um, because there are, there are logistics that we're still pinning down and there might be things that we can't answer tonight. So thank you again for coming. Thank you for bringing your questions. They are more than welcome, but please do check them and save them till the end. Um, that, that is our, what we believe is the most efficient way to do it with the group that is this site. So thank you, thank you. Um, so let's start with the highest level. Um, we are about, um, Montessori education and world peace. That's why Great River exists. That's why so many of you send your children there. And that's certainly why so many of us staff work here. Um, and so our mission is to use Montessori um, as a lens to create a learning community that prepares students to be uh, responsible and engaged citizens of the world. And we do believe that this work that we're doing right now is a big part of that. Um, and so again, always holding on to that big why. There are lots of wonderful quotes and here are just a few that I wanna share that can remind us of the why of what we're doing. This quote, um, I'm sorry, I gotta move where everyone is. Uh, when the child goes out, it is the world itself that offers itself to him. Let us take the child out to show him real things instead of making objects which represent ideas and closing them in cupboards. So this idea that we are going into the real world to do our biology work and our community work and doing real community work um, is crucial to what we do, especially coming um, at this stage in what has been several years of pandemic learning. Um, another quote, there is no description, no image in any book that is capable of replacing the sight of real trees and all the life to be found around them in a real forest. Something emanates from those trees, which speaks to the soul something no book, no museum is capable of. So there are many, many quotes, and I just read the first two, that talk about the importance of this. And I just want to anchor that. Our philosophy and our vision are so tied to what we're doing here. Um, so that being said, what is a key experience? Uh, they are definitionally extended experiences. So they're different than a field trip. Um, they're a chance to build towards our vision and our mission and it helps the child, children work towards that um, independence, that independence from their family, that independence from their teachers, and take a step towards building that community um, in just a small, supportive way. Um, there are ways that we build our community that connect with nature. We make memories. 
we learn in other ways, um, and they allow for us to have traditions and um, challenges in that right level of a risk. So they are so important to social emotional learning, to building confidence, to fighting long-term anxiety, to building intellectual connections and closing experience gaps. So um, there are so many places that these key experiences come together. And for us, this key experience is um, going to a place called the Long Lake Conservation Center. We have in the past gone to places like Wolf Creek, and we've gone to places like Wujibugget. Um, this year, those didn't work because the fall wasn't the right time for this trip. And Wolf Ridge and Wujibugget are not available right now. But Long Lake Conservation, Conservation Center is, um, they, and they're set up with some incredible programming. And so it'll be different than we've done in the past, but it will be a very similar experience at a new place. Um, and Long Lake has existed for a long time, and we have spoken with um, teachers and schools and students who have gone to um, Long Lake before, and we feel confident that we'll uh, continue this experience for us. Um, and all fourth through sixth graders and a bunch of adults will be going. So it is not for the first, second, and third grade. It is not for the adolescents. It is for school adults who have been trained to do this work and our incredible group of students, um, upper elementary students. Um, so Long Lake um, is two and a half hours uh, north of here in Palisade, um, just a little bit south of Grand Rapids. Um, they we're going to take charter buses, which is awesome because they have bathrooms um, and it feels fancy and very spacious to put the uh, gear in. Uh, we will also have an emergency vehicle with us um, for all of the reasons that you would want that. So, Brent. You're muted, Brent. Sorry, I'm good now. Um, so this kind of talks about what we'll be doing at Long Lake. Uh, you know, this trip to me is very important. Um, the history that before I came to Great River, I worked at camps like this, and uh, I just know how much they can mean to kids and the experience they can bring. So um, we'll keep them busy. They'll be very tired when they come home. Um, we'll put them in eight different trail groups. So the kids will be in eight different groups and have eight uh, adults of their staff leading those uh, activities and the day classes are listed there. Uh, basically, since we're there for the whole week, we'll practically be doing everything they have to offer. Um, their evening classes sound really cool. They're in the dark sky area of Minnesota. So they do really cool stuff with astrology. And uh, they also have a bog that we'll get to go explore. Um, depending on what's happening in March, we might get to do some syruping. Um, I doubt we'll be canoeing just because even if it's not ice. It'll be very, very cold, the water. But um, yeah, so lots of hands-on, very experiential. They really want the kids to get out, get dirty, learn by doing. So um, yeah, that's what we'll be doing there. So a lot of questions about where we'll be sleeping. Uh, this is just one example of uh, the lodges they have. They have two different lodges. And each room has eight total beds, so there's four bunk beds. Um, and I did ask, they said each room also has their own private bathroom and shower. Uh, so we'll be making the groups um, based on classrooms, but also based on um, gender and gender preference. And um, those discussions can be with Salaha, can be with uh, our social worker Salaha, and also with the guides. The guides will kind of be taking the lead since they know the kids the best on uh, who will be rooming together and uh, there'll be an adult we don't have an adult for every room because there's a lot of different rooms um, but we'll have one at least either next to or with the kids so we'll kind of place um, them accordingly knowing some groups that can have eight kids in one room and still be uh, reasonable so um, I think that's all I had for, for that one so eating is also an often asked question, and uh, they gave me an example of just one day of the kinds of food they serve. So they're looking for food that kids will eat, kids will enjoy. Um, 
but everybody will be getting a packet tomorrow, uh, should be coming home tomorrow. And on that, has if you have special diets, you can fill that out and we turn that in and, you know, they'll cater to the gluten-free diets, vegetarians, um, you know, anything, allergies that you might have. So uh, you'll be able to put all that on there and they'll take that into consideration. And, uh, you know, there might be different meals for some kids than what everybody else is having. So don't think anyone's going to go hungry. Um, oftentimes, families uh, bring us, uh, donate some snacks. So uh, we can have that available to the kids throughout the day as well. But uh, yeah, so what your kids will need to bring. Uh, we'll be sending home also this list with the kids in that packet tomorrow. Um, on that list also, it talks about things they don't need, which is also very important. So things like electronics, uh, don't need that. We don't need phones. So, um, you know, the main thing are proper gear for the weather. So uh, good weatherproof things will be out in the rain if it's raining, if it's snowing. So making sure they got some good boots. Uh, they highly recommend rubber boots for the spring. I'm sure it can get very wet as the snow is melting, especially if we're going near slash in the bog and doing pond studies. Uh, those will come in handy. So also with that, you know, if maybe something on here your family doesn't have and you don't necessarily want to go out and buy it just for this trip, um, there are ways uh, you can reach out to me, you can reach out to Salaha, um, and we can help find gear for families. Maybe you don't have a sleeping bag. So um, I know one thing, a couple things that aren't on here that you might consider, you know, if your child's a very light sleeper, you could have earplugs. Maybe they don't need, want to bring their stuffy. Um, that might be important. So that's not necessarily on here, but you can think about those things too. And also, I think on the hand, on the packet tomorrow, uh, some things they can have on the bus, like books are a good choice. Um, it's only a two-hour bus ride, but uh, they could bring a deck of cards. You know, so those things are options as well. So this is uh, pulled from our family handbook, um, just behavior policies and expectations while on key experiences. Uh, you know, it's not too different than our expectations that we have in the classroom. Obviously, we're all living life together up there for a week, um, sharing spaces that we don't normally share. So uh, there are, our expectations are a bit heightened during the key experiences, but, um, you know, the main thing we want to do is build community and uh, we'll have open communication with families if something does arise. Um, you know, when I was working at camps, my main thing was, you know, make the call, call the parents, call the family, and uh, then we can talk about it from there. But uh, I don't think I need to read this to you. This is also getting recorded and will be sent out. This one is uh, what they ask of our students. So this is from Long Lake specifically. Um, you know, it's all very reasonable. It kind of talks about planning and preparing for the trip, um, especially just talking about what it's going to be like to be overnight because a lot of kids probably haven't done that. You know, only the sixth graders have gone on key experiences. And so if you fourth or fifth grader hasn't done a summer camp or something like that, this might be very new to them. So just really talking about that ahead of time, I think helps a lot. Um, and there are things you can do. You can provide... Uh, like a self-addressed stamp envelope so they can mail you letters. Uh, I'm also offering if um, families want to pre-write letters, they can uh, either deliver to me or to the office and I can pass those out throughout the week. Those are always an uplifter. So um, medications are also a big question. So if you have meds, um, we are hoping to collect those uh, March 7th, 8th and 9th, that the week before the trip. Um, so it's very important to know that anything at all that your child will be taking um, while at Long Lake has to have the form filled out and signed by your doctor. So that could be um, an over-the-counter med, maybe an allergy pill, maybe prescription med, uh, could be um, homeopathic, essential oils, those type of things. So uh, in order for us to give that to them, we have to have that permission slip filled out and signed by a doctor. And turn those into the office on uh, March 7th, 8th, and 9th, we'll send a reminder, but that helps to 
help us get organized. Um, all the guides will be, they'll have their own locked medicine tackle box basically. Uh, and so they'll be responsible for their own students. Um, so building on that, I want to just state how aware we are that for many children and for many caregivers, this is a big step, um, especially coming at this stage in the pandemic. Um, some people have been um, together just a tremendous amount, which is just awesome, and um, makes the this experience of stepping away and stepping into independence uh, potentially more challenging for some children and for some caregivers. So we wanted to explain not only are we planning for safe distribution of medicine and the best classes available and all of that, we are also planning for how we can get there as emotionally strong and happy um, as can be. And so one of the things we're doing is we're having meetings, questions and answer sessions. Brent is going to go to every upper elementary classroom and is going to share this information again and give a chance to talk and uh, both to talk about logistics, because sometimes having those logistics can just help uh, soothe a lot of us, but also to talk about other feelings. So that's a step we're doing. The homework the week before this key experience is going to be full of the, the menu is going to be full of things that will prepare children for this trip and will prepare caregivers for this trip. So there is some pre-work that is, you know, double checking a packing list, doing things that might soothe you, helping you uh, prepare in various ways. And we're uh, building that as based on the meetings we have and the needs we observe. Um, we are on top of that planning social emotional learning lessons and discussions to make space for so the feeling, some children are just feeling super excited. There's the like, woo, freedom feel, and other children are feeling the exact opposite. Um, and both are okay. Um, so wanted to say that we're planning for that and we will talk about it. The next um, thing we're gonna do is we're gonna do a lot of work as a staff to plan and prepare for all the different situations that can come up so that we're ready for whatever happens. Um, and then we also just want to name that there are big feelings and that everyone in our community can do this. Children um, can spend a week away. Their parents can handle it. Um, and everyone can come back with good memories. Um, and it might be really, really easy for some people. And it might be really, really hard for some people. And those are both okay. Um, so I hear that my mic, my mic is not doing great. Give me a second. Sorry. Let's see if this helps at all. Sorry, is that any better? Um, we'll yeah, can you start over? Better. Oh, um, from the beginning. <laughs> uh, so if, if you want to talk about these things in more detail, I would love to answer questions, but I do want to say that we are doing a lot of social emotional work and that all of the children and uh, families uh, will be strengthened by this type of experience. And we believe uh, wholeheartedly in that. We have a lot of um, anecdotal and research-based evidence to support that. Um, that being said, it is still pandemic. People have all sorts of terms. Some people call it, you know, post-Delta or post-pandemic or mid-pandemic or um, you know, early endemic. There's all sorts of terms to talk about what we've been living through. Um, whatever you want to call it, um, it is something we take seriously. Um, so COVID mitigation has been a big part of our planning so far. Um, and we want to uh, just point out on these graphs that we are part of the reason that we feel confident going is because the data isn't going up anymore. The case counts aren't uh, going up. We are paying attention to things like that and not just planning regardless. That's why we didn't go in the fall. That's why we were, we've were we been sort of planning while watching. So just want to state that that is we are responsive to the data as best we can. Um, and there are many strategies that you can, that have been sent out that you can ask specific questions about everything from masking to potting to um, making sure the sleeping and eating groups are contained so we are aware of if there are any tests any positive cases, 
the exposure is limited. We have testing beforehand that we are um, facilitating through you and with support of the PEG group, um, and we'll have tests with us. So with all of the um, systems in place, we feel like the, the right of or amount of mitigation has been done to support this experience and because it has so many benefits. So um, that is um, a thing that we feel good about right now. Um, and here are the important dates that we are working through. First, we wanted to communicate the COVID mitigation early enough that group think could bring us back questions that we could process. Um, and so the questions we've received have helped us make a better plan. So thank you for those of you who have engaged with that. And thank you for those of you who are here. Um, parent info night, communicating with families or caregiver info night and family info night. Um, this is an important part of it too. And so we're there. Waivers and med forms and other details are gonna go out tomorrow. And either tomorrow or in the few days following, depending on how the tech syncs. Also, we will be sending out this slideshow and this video of this slideshow and all of those other information, the packing lists, the um, information from Long Lake Conservation Center and all of that. So all of that communication will be sent to you on Thursday. Another big part they ask we have is we need your support. Um, we need your help making sure we get those forms back by Wednesday, February 16th. The logistics of making the groups and giving each individual child the support they need um, and having time to make groups and check them with all of the uh, different student support services and special ed services and social workers and um, prior guides and all of that work takes a lot of time. Um, and it's a process that we take very seriously. And that's why we need the forms back so soon. That being said, please do not return the med forms next week. Get those to the office with the medicines. Uh, a few years ago, we had students who tried to bring the medicine to their teacher. Um, and by bringing it into the classroom, it got lost because if you've ever seen our lost and found, the number of things that can be set down by an elementary student and then lost forever is a lot. And we do not want that to happen to the medicines. And so please make sure the medicines go directly to the office um, because, again, it's a safety concern and it's a uh, logistical concern. So make sure the forms come back next week, the meds come back a couple weeks later directly to the office. And then March 14th through the 18th, that's when we get to go on the trip. Um, so, Matt, what's the handout uh, or the yeah. packets that's going home tomorrow? There's going to be yeah. two pages that are stapled together uh, with a paperless or a Staple is staple, if you've seen that. Anyway, they'll be connected together. So those are the things that need to be filled out in return. Everything else in the packet will be able to stay with you. Things like packing lists and holding on to those med forms. Uh, we'll, also, we'll, pro we'll probably also send a link to those med forms if you need for later. Uh, because like Brent said earlier, I'll just say it again, all of the med forms, even the ones for over-the-counter or homeopathic, we need to go through and we need to get a signature from the care provider. Um, so this is time for questions. If you have additional questions, please check them in. I'm gonna answer the ones that have been chatted already um, and we'll go from there. So first, thank you for everyone that pointed out that my microphone was behind me um, and I apologize. Um, second, um, there was a question asking if these packing lists will be shared, yes, they will be shared tomorrow. They will be shared digitally. There will be shortened versions on the homework in March. Um, and they're in this video presentation. So um, we want to make sure that everyone has access to that. Personally, that's the thing that helps me plan and helps me feel good when I can cross things off of lists. So we will make sure you have easy access to that. Um, there are questions about. Uh, if there's going to be a time during the week where students can call or text their parent to check in. The policy at Great River has been, we will send updates. Um, so there will be a group email sent that shows just generally what's happening. And we will call if there's a problem. So obviously like if someone twists their ankle and we're icing it and we're looking at it in the nurse's office and things like that, we would call. We would make sure you're informed and your child has a chance to connect but we will not schedule a 
um, like chance where we like pass around our like the teacher phones and have them text the parents or call. We we're trying to foster that independence. Uh, we do facilitate it. If you write letters ahead of time, we will deliver them on whatever day you ask. Um, and if they write letters, we will send them back to you as well. Um, and we'll send pictures of the kids doing all the fun activities um, uh, as kind of a whole unit. Um, yeah, and with that, Matt, uh, you know, just yeah. from working in summer camp so many years, it, oftentimes you think, oh, it would be nice, like might help them over the home fitness, but oftentimes it kind of makes it, can make it worse to offer that. So um, if you've sent your kids to summer camp, you kind of know that's kind of the universal belief and method of, uh, you know, using those letters. And um, there's lots of things that we can do to help with the homesickness part. But oftentimes, parents might be missing their kids more than the other way around. Um, I see. Um, I'm just going through the chat questions. And then I see there's a hand raised. And I can try and do that as well. Um, uh, do families need to contribute rapid tests? Um, Brent has already ordered those. So we have a whole set of them. And they will be sent home uh, the Thursday beforehand. Um, and we'll have them. Um, I mean, I'm always pro donations. So if you want to reach out to the office and see if that's something you, a way you'd like to contribute, uh, thank you. But we have enough for the trip. Um, will anyone be taking photos during their time away? Yes. Um, many of us guides really enjoy that documenting sort of the adventure. And we'll make sure that a few of us are sending back some photos each day. We will not be trying to make sure we get a photo of each kid each day. Um, that's, uh, we will be more busy than that. Um, but we will make sure that general. Uh, uh, general excitement photos are shared um, and that each trail group tries to send back at least one during the week. The medication forms, are they available digitally? Uh, yes, we will make sure that we send that to you because I know uh, sending an email might be easier than finding a fax machine. Fax machine. Um, uh, question on how cabins will be grouped. Um, so the cabin groups and the eating groups will be the same and those are being made with a combination of guides, assistants, special ed staff, uh, social work input, and student observation and student discussion. Um, so we are using all of those inputs to make groups that work. Um, so that's as much as I can say about that right now. Um, say more about the rules around students using technology on the trip. The student trip. The students are not to bring technology. Um, so the use of technology is limited uh, based on the fact that they shouldn't have it with them. Um, uh, thank you for your patience. I'm just reading through these questions. Um, we understand wet and muddy, but we uh, dry boots and outerwear overnight. What can we do to help ensure dry boots, gloves, coats each day? Um, that's a great question. Um, Brent, do you have any feedback on that? I mean, I think having the right socks goes a long way. Um, you know, if you have the rubber boots, they should stay pretty dry inside. It depends how deep they go into the, the pond, but uh, if it's even water in the ice. Um, yeah, I think just lots of socks is the best way to do it. And if you have wool or uh, synthetic, like smart wool type things. And I'll be bringing two pairs of boots for that exact reason. Um, the What is the daily schedule, wake up times, bedtimes? Um, Brent, was that, I don't think we have that on a slide, do we? Uh, I don't think it was, but it looked like uh, wake up breakfast, like KP duty, kitchen patrol duty is uh, 7.45. So depending on the room, some rooms might only need 15 minutes, you ready? Some rooms might want 45 minutes. So. I'm guessing most kids will be up by seven and uh, the last program is at nine. So at that point, we'll just go back to our rooms and lights out, I'm sure by 9.30, 9.45, somewhere in there. So it might and be later those, than you used to. And those details will be shared again as we get closer and things get flushed in a little bit more. Um, will students eat meals in their bedrooms with only their pod or in a larger room with multiple pods? It will be in a larger room with multiple pods. And we've uh, worked with LLCC and um, 
are spacing groups further apart than they would be in a normal year. So they'll be in their little circles only with that group that they're exposed to, but other people will be in the room. Um, and we've also talked about them, about their HVAC system, and they have um, a top-notch recently improved HVAC system like many of us have done in this time. Um, if my child already, go ahead, Brent. I was just gonna say, uh, they also said if we want to do split meals, then that's an option that we can discuss. So just to have less people so, in there at once. If my child already takes medication at school and has doctor forms at school, will those suffice? Um, Brent, can we follow up on that one? That's a great question. Yeah, I think it, they do, but yeah, we should follow up for sure. Um, there's a question and this comes up every year. Will we know about cabin groups before the trip? Uh, in our experience, generally that is not a best practice. Um, so we generally reveal cabin groups um, at the, on the trip um, and that is um, on purpose. Um, the, there are lots of great questions about technology, smartwatches, cameras, um, book lights, um, we should also, Brent, make a uh, what counts and what doesn't count as technology um, visual to share with the classes when we do those meetings and then with you all. Uh, yeah, if they, I think they still make those disposable cameras. I'd be open to that over. Um, so uh, tech, I, in my uh, flashlights and book lights, I have not seen counted in the past, nor have I seen disposable cameras. Um, a lot of times it's um, things that have games, things that have texting ability, things like that, things that are expensive and you'd be sad if they were broken or lost um, because that is what has happened a lot in my experience. Um, and so we are part of this, we're trying to remove that conflict of, you know, someone stepped on it and it's broken now. Um, so that is part of the piece work we do. Um, but we will make a tech versus not tech um thing to clarify that for both every family and for us as adults who are running the trip um uh the and it's not we are well long lake conservation center has cabins there's been a couple questions about the cabins so i want to be clear we are not staying in cabins we're staying in lodges um and so they are they have hallways they have bathrooms attached to their rooms um so running water and a warm place to go potty are um, easily accessible by everyone. Um, as fun as it would be to like hike through the snow to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night, I am happy that we're not navigating that uh, with everyone's first trip away in many years. Um, and uh, have a great question, and it's not a silly question about do we pay for this? If not, is there an appropriate donation amount to cover the costs? Um, this is such an important part of what we do. It is baked into our curriculum costs. We would not uh, mandate everyone go on a trip like this and then ask families to pay for it. So this is baked into our budget each year. It's um, an important line item in the budget and it is like the third big rock we put in as we're filling it in um, right after paying for the building and paying for the staff. Um, that being said, the uh, Great River Foundation is always fundraising. And things like this do cost money. So if your family is able to connect with the Great River Foundation and um, work on donations of things, that is always appreciated because um, there's a lot of wonderful things we can do to support people when we have the funds. I think I got all the questions. I appreciate everyone's patience. I know that's a lot of talking and that we kind of ran out of visuals here at the end. Um, if you have other questions, um, oh, uh, here's one more. Can kids make group requests? I know at least two classrooms have already sort of handed out like a little survey to their students asking for some of their input on where they're comfortable and how they're comfortable. Um, we work really hard to make sure we don't say like, give us the three people, we'll make sure you're with them. Because then there's always like math that doesn't work out and you end up with like 13 children that are interlinked and there's no way to split them. So we do, uh, most of the communities in the past have asked kids to give input. Um, and I know in Crow Wing, we have a survey that we'll be filling out next week that will help inform our decisions. Um, and I know that's happened in at least two other classes already. Uh, 
So thank you. Uh, we will share all of this. We are very excited. Uh, we appreciate you coming here. If you have further questions, feel free to stick around. Otherwise, go have a lovely evening. Um, and we really, really appreciate um, being able to be, go on this adventure with you. Yeah, thanks, everybody. Thanks for coming. Now, if you have a question, you're actually able to unmute. We're at that part of the evening where our groups have gotten smaller. Thank you again for coming.